I've never seen a president try to create more problems for a future president. In the last hours of his presidency, he completely d double crosses one of our biggest allies. And now, after 18 months of this hacking, he does something about it. Why didn't he do something about it 18 months ago? <laughs> it wouldn't have happened. That is longtime Trump ally and former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani weighing in Friday on President Obama's latest foreign policy moves aimed at Israel and Russia. Let's bring in Sarah Isger Flores, former deputy campaign manager for Carly Fiorina and former RNC deputy comm director. Joe Watkins, former White House aide for President George H.W. Bush. And Rick Tyler, co-founder of Foundry Strategies and an MSNBC political analyst. Thank you all for being here this morning. Good to be here. So, Rick, let's start with you. You heard Giuliani speaking. Do you agree with him? Is President Obama trying to throw up roadblocks for Trump here, or is this just hyperbole for political purposes from the Trump camp? Well, it does seem curious that Barack Obama has really not acted tough anywhere from red lines in Syria uh, to the Russians, and now all of a sudden he has a political adversary and a Democratic Party that wants to undermine the Trump's uh, legitimacy of the presidency, and he's, he's lending uh, credence to that. So I think it is a bit suspicious. And Joe, Trump walks into the White House January 20th, and President Obama's just ordered these new sanctions. How is this going to play out? Does Trump have room to undo them or possibly change them? Well, there's always the possibility that uh, Donald Trump could uh, undo it or change it. Uh, Vladimir Putin has said he wants to wait to see uh, how the, the Trump uh, team uh, um, uh, handles their relationship once they take office on January 20th. So uh, it's a kind of a wait and see. Uh, but it does uh, make it a little bit tricky for Donald Trump uh, starting as president. Like, this is unprecedented, in, 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 at least in recent American transition history. Unprecedented and tricky. It's interesting. In the Washington Post, Aaron Blake writes that Republicans are put in a difficult position now of, quote, investigating very serious allegations against an adversarial foreign power and potentially undermining the legitimacy of their new Republican president. Sarah, if you're a Republican in Congress, how are you expected to handle this? Well, first of all, we know this is about Barack Obama's legacy. He was expecting Hillary Clinton to be taking her inaugural address next month, and so they're scrambling to figure out how to protect what's left of the Obama legacy. So what they're trying to do is throw dirt in the eyes of the transition team while they're trying to assemble a government. If you're a Republican in Congress, of course we don't want anyone messing with our elections, and uh, we do believe that the Russians were hacking these institutions. This idea, though, that they hacked the election is yet to be proven, and so I think Republicans in Congress Congress have some room to look into this, but as the president has asked everyone to move on, you know, that he will take care of the Russians and this uh, past offense, but obviously Obama didn't think it was important for 18 months, as Rick said. Uh, so this is clearly a political maneuver. It's about protecting his legacy. Maybe if he can get the Republicans to concentrate on Russia, they won't notice that Obamacare is still in place. I don't think it's going to happen. Well, Vladimir Putin has also said that he won't force out U.S. diplomats in Russia in retaliation for Obama's actions. And this this is a move that Trump praised in a tweet late yesterday. Great move on delay by V. Putin. I always knew he was very smart. Rick, how big of a deal is this for an incoming president to so publicly profess admiration for a Russian leader? Is this tampering with the current administration in a way? More roadblocks? Look, it remains to be seen. I'm sure Donald Trump and, and probably Vladimir Putin want to rebegin re negotiations. Uh, with each other. What's interesting, though, and I will concede here that, you know, we should have one president at a time, and, and Donald Trump has been very vocal, unprecedentedly so, during this transition. But note that during this transition, you had two uh, nations, one our most important ally in the Middle East, Israel, and the other, uh, our most important, one of our most important uh, rival enemies, Russia, both slamming the door on Obama, the Obama administration during this transition and pointedly welcoming the Trump administration. I think that's pretty remarkable. And Joe and Sarah, I want to ask you this because just like Rick said, there's one president at a time. How much is this muddying this whole transition? And, and seriously, I mean, January 20th, everything is going to change. Joe, what's your take? Well, of course, it makes it a little bit uh, tense. I mean, things are tense right now between the outgoing Obama administration and the incoming Trump uh, administration. Uh, in, in a perfect world, uh, there would be no great decisions, uh, no big policy decisions coming forth in the last uh, month or so of a president, an outgoing president's uh, term of office. But that hasn't been the case. He's made two very, very big decisions, certainly uh, the one regarding uh, uh, Israel and the resolution uh, on Israel uh, by the Security Council, and then this uh, second decision, of course, 
uh, with regards to uh, throwing out 35 Russian diplomats. So uh, it's, it's, it's very tense right now, but uh, it's only going to last another few weeks, and then there'll be a new administration. Well, nothing's been predictable so far. Sarah, what's your take on that? Well, I uh, totally agree. The Obama administration foreign policy has been a disaster from the start, so there's no reason it wouldn't be in the last few weeks either. What I do think, though, is that we're misunderstanding what this one president at a time means. Uh, that means that Donald Trump shouldn't be calling up people and telling them one thing while Barack Obama tells them something else. That's not happening. What the president-elect is doing is giving his opinion on what's going on. Uh, that's no different than a campaign, and it's no different from what Barack Obama did uh, during his campaign as well. Once the president-elect is in office, I think it's going to be a great relief to our allies and, frankly, even our adversaries to have America back in a strength and a leadership role. And it's why we're seeing Bibi Netanyahu and Israel react the way he is, and Putin as well. They are ready for new leadership in America, and obviously the American people were as well.